Uh, hello and welcome to our webinar on Blue Hill 3, your, your software next steps. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I'm Nick Erickson, your host for this webinar. Today I'm joined by Ashley Davis, one of our product support engineers. In this role, Ashley works with Instron's aftermarket accessories for universal testing machines, which includes all of our static testing software, our grips, extensometers, and everything else that can be added to the test frame. Uh, she's here to talk about Blue Hill 3, uh, the current status of the platform, what that means for labs using it, and what migration to the latest software, Blue Hill Universal, looks like. Uh, we expect the presentation should take around 30 minutes or so. Uh, if you do have any questions, please use the little Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. Uh, you can submit these at any time. Uh, we will address these at the end. I also want to mention that we are recording this webinar and that all of you will receive an email afterwards with a link to the video, and it will also be available on our website, instron.com. Uh, so with that said, I'll turn things over to Ashley to get us started. Cool. Thanks, Nick. I'm going to share my screen real quick, make sure everybody can see what's going on. Oh, my bad. All right. Let me actually flip this. There we go. All right. Again, good morning, everybody, wherever you're coming from today. My name is Ashley Davis. I'm the product, product support here engineer at Instron. And as Nick said, what we're covering today, we're going to talk about your software status of Blue Hill 3, your major Blue Hill Universal features, and any major changes coming away from Blue Hill 3. I'm going to do a live demo and an example workflow in Blue Hill Universal. I might also call it Blue Hill U occasionally. And then as Nick said, if you have any questions, feel free to put them into the chat. My colleague Robert will actually be answering some of those, but if he's not able to get to all of them, we'll try and make sure we get to them at the end. And then I want to comment that maybe you have an older version of Blue Hill, maybe Blue Hill 1, Blue Hill 2. I am having an additional webinar to focus on those older legacy Blue Hills on April 25th. Today is going to be primarily about the differences compared to Blue Hill 3. Definitely stay and feel free to watch the demo if you'd like, but I just want to point that out in case you are on an earlier version. So let's get into it. So your Blue Hill 3 status, manufactured from 2010 to 2017. As of last year, January 1st, 2022, Blue Hill 3 is discontinued. And what this means is that there are no updates no additional features or enhancements, and tech support's only gonna be on a reasonable effort basis. Um, and part of the reason that we've had to discontinue Blue Hill 3 and move towards Blue Hill Universal is that the legacy windows that Blue Hill 3 uh, primarily runs on, whether that's XP or 7, those are discontinued by Microsoft. So XP was discontinued in 2014 and 7 was discontinued in 2020. And we wanna make sure that we're running our software on the you know, most recent kind of operating system, whether that's Windows 10 or Windows 11. And what does this mean though, additionally, is that as a result, there are no new security updates, non-security hotfixes, free or paid assisted support options, or any online technical content updates. And this comes direct from the Microsoft website. So I wanna point out if your PC is going to crash, Microsoft is not going to provide support. And if you have all of your method files or any of your historic sample results, those will be lost unless they're saved elsewhere. So if you take anything away from today, it's that the best course of action for your lab is going to be to proactively upgrade and prevent any kind of major downtime. We obviously don't want any major kind of technical issues but you know, not everything's perfect and we wanna get ahead of those before they occur. So before I get into the software itself, um, I wanna highlight some of the major changes coming into Blue Hill Universal. I promise there's not gonna to be too much more PowerPoint. So what's new, what's most recent and probably most exciting is revision history. And I will show this a little bit more when I actually get on the frame. So revision history, now actually allows us to have a log of changes in our methods, our test samples, and our report files, and it shows us what was changed, when it was changed, and who actually changed it. 
Next, we have Instron Connect. So this actually allows you to have a direct connection to our service support team. So you can directly request a support request through the Blue Hill Universal software. You can share your screen with tech support. You have access to all of your service history, and you can actually download direct software updates through Blue Hill U. Uh, I do want to point out, though, it does require a network connection and will allow, you do need to have IT permission. So kind of in that line, maybe you're using security within Blue Hill 3, which is set up in the Blue Hill 3 software itself. We now allow for Active Directory security. So this actually allows for network-based security permissions based on your user network permissions. Uh, which again is going to be something that's going to be controlled by IT. Um, but your user permissions are going to be set by what group you're a part of rather than individually set within the software itself. So maybe you have uh, a couple of frames in your lab and they all have security. You don't need to set them up for every single frame. It's going to pull from your Active Directory. Next, we have something called quick test. So this actually allows you to do, if you're looking to get fast results, you just wanna find the max load of this specimen really quickly. Um, you can do very simple tensile or compression tests um, without the need to actually build a new method or edit an existing one. Um, I'll show where it lives, but it does live within the test screen. Um, but again, quick and easy way to get results fast if you don't wanna rebuild your methods. And then lastly, probably biggest thing is a modernized test profiler. Maybe you're using test profiler currently within Blue Hill 3, or you're looking to do cyclic testing in the future. Uh, this test profiler does provide the same powerful multi-sequence steps, um, but it's redesigned more intuitive with better visual prompts. And this is all very high level. I don't have time today, unfortunately, to go into all of these features. Um, but I wanna give a shout out to our marketing team. They've done an awesome job of creating videos and collateral related to all of these features. Uh, and you, you wanna learn more, you can definitely check out our website or check out YouTube for those videos. But with that, I know we're, we're all anxious to see what the software looks like. So let's get into the workflow. I'm gonna stop sharing here. I'm actually gonna come over and make sure that I'm sharing what's on my screen here. Okay. Great, okay. So now that I did that, uh, at the top, you should have a view options button. Go ahead and select that and you can select speaker side-by-side -side view. Uh, when you do that, there should be a bar that appears somewhere within your screen. You can use your cursor and move that. So, you know, you can change the size of this screen versus what I'm doing. Um, so I'm doing testing today on our 6,800 table model frame. Um, we have our all-in-one computer that, run, win, that runs Windows 10. And this is really nice. This is an option because it comes on this arm bar um, and it eliminates the need for a PC tower and a desktop in case you're looking to like free up any space in your lab. But also I'm very short. So my colleagues might angle it up, but I definitely need to angle it down. That way I can see the screen properly. Um, but this is optional, but again, does run on Windows 10. So looking at our screen, uh, it should, you know, you see some of the same buttons from Blue Hill 3. You have your test, your method, your analysis, if you have that, and your admin tab. Uh, definitely a more modernized look and everything has been designed for touch. So all of your buttons are going to be large and easy to press, um, again, to eliminate the need of the desktop if, if that's something you want to move away from. So I'm just gonna get into it, get into our test. So at the top, this is where all of our methods would live. Um, I only have one, I have very simple testing, but we also have the option to create a new method or to run that quick test in case we just wanna do a quick grip and rip at the bottom, I have all of my previous samples if I'd like to open those up and continue running, but I'm gonna go ahead and just start a new file. It's gonna give me a safety notification 
And while that's thinking, I'm gonna load up my five kilonewton wedge action grips. I just have a plastic specimen that I'm gonna be testing. Nice and snug, nice and snug. All right, so my screen, we have a graph. We have some operator inputs on the side, as well as this pass fail window, which I'll get into. Then we have all of our results at the bottom. So like in Blue Hill 3, we do have the option for choice inputs. So I have my operator input because I don't wanna have to type in my name every time. Let me just go ahead and type in my part number. T111222. And then what we actually have added within Blue Hill Universal are linked choice inputs. So here at the bottom, we see I have length, width, and thickness. Under specimen type, if I select none, those all become white and I can edit them. But I have three specimens that I am constantly testing. And I don't want to have to type in my length, my width, my thickness every single time. And I also just want to prevent any kind of operator error. Um, so if I select A, if I select B, we see that those parameters have updated as to what I've set previously. And then same thing with C. I'm gonna go ahead with A. And then another kind of linked choice input that I have related to my test parameters is my test speed. So I have it defaulting to 200, um, but I also have the option for 100 and 300 millimeters a minute. So again, if you're looking to do different rates of testing, but you don't wanna type it in every single time, um, this is a really great way to streamline what you're working through. Just like that, put on my safety glasses. And then we are going to start this test from my handset. At the top, I have my live displays for displacement and load. I can add additional ones. I have some soft displays at the bottom. Oh, perfect. That was pretty quick. So big red X, what is that? Um, this is an optional feature called pass fail in Blue Hill Universal. Um, so if I come down to my results table, we see I have a user, part number, specimen type, that's all from my operator inputs. But my maximum force has a negative sign next to it. This means that I have certain bounds that my force needs to be within, and this is below my lower threshold bound. Um, I, again, totally optional, but if you're, you're just cranking out specimens, and you need to make sure that they're good for manufacturing, just a really nice visual indicator um, rather than having to manually sift through your data. But I can edit this from the test screen itself or within the method. I just wanna show what it looks like when it does pass. So I'm gonna change this to 900 as my lower bound. See, I have my upper bound of 2000, close, and it changes to pass. And I no longer have that minus sign next to my maximum force. Um, so again, totally optional. What if I don't want it? It's very easy for me within this screen to edit what I'm actually seeing. So I don't want this, I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna click on this little sandwich and edit my layout. I can delete that. And while I'm here, I wanna add another graph. Little sandwich, graph one. At the bottom, I'm gonna add my graph two, an exit layout editor. So I've very quickly, very easily been able to add in another graph. So I have my force displacement as well as my stress strain. So hopefully this isn't too daunting um, coming over from Blue Hill 3, but very easy to manipulate things for your needs. Now, at the bottom results, I have a couple results. I have my force, my strain, and my Young's modulus. I wanna add an additional calculation. So. Let's go into the method and a little different uh, in Blue Hill 3, it should be running vertically, but all of your options are now running horizontally, but they should look familiar. Um, if I go into specimen, this is where I can set all of those choice inputs. Same thing with sample. Measurements tab, this is where I'm pulling all of my physical and virtual measurements, but calculations tab, what I'm gonna do under available calculations, I want to add a yield so I can select this and I can either use these arrows in the middle or I can double click and I'm gonna double click. That's faster for me. At the bottom, I have some options that pop up that I need to fill out. 
So type, uh, it defaults to zero, but I'm gonna do an offset. And then I need to make sure that I have a parent selected. So I'm gonna select Young's modulus and it defaults to 0.2%, fine by me, I'm gonna keep that. And then from here, we can also indicate on graph. So if I come back, uh, we can see that, that that yield line has been added in live time. Um, at the bottom though, I still need to actually add that result within this table. So when I'm back in method, I'm gonna come to workspace. And this is where we have all of our operator inputs uh, where we're pulling in standard inputs as well as choice inputs, but I wanna go to results, scroll down and I pulled in that yield calculation and now I can pull in my force, which again, I'm just gonna double click. Um, I can change my units very easily. It defaults to kilonewtons, but we are not going that high. So we're going to newtons. I'm just gonna leave my decimal places as my rounding format and only two. Um, and then again, if I want, I can add some failure bounds, but we're not gonna do that for now. If I come over here and we see that my force at yield has added itself to the end of my results table. So very simple to do. Um, just to look at other tabs, maybe you're curious about test control. This is a very simple test. I, I'm just pulling it, um, that predefined rate of either 100, 200, or 300 millimeters a minute. But I've done all of these changes. Now, how are they being tracked other than revision history? Now we have this new button, this little stopwatch. Everything at the top here is everything that I have changed so far. So we have our pending changes. We have our action that was done, our affected item, the new value and the previous value. So everything up here is everything I've done so far within this demo. But as we scroll, we get a log of all of our changes that have occurred to this method all the way back to when it was first created in November. Um, and we can see the date as well as Ally. I am using a Blue Hill security right now. I'm logged in as Ally. So Ally is the only one who has modified any of this. Um, I do want to point out though, this is purely a log. This is not um, a historical database of older versions of your method. If that is something you're interested in though, if you want to be able to download revision three, um, that's actually going to be capable within another software module called Blue Hill Central. Um, if you are curious about Central, uh, you can definitely reach out to me at the end or have a conversation with your sales um, representative. But again, purely a log, but if you're looking for downloadable results and a traceability, that's going to be part of our Central. So I'm gonna close this. That was within the method, but we also get that within our sample as well. So if I open that up, we can see everything I've done. I've tested a specimen. I've modified some units. Um, I've, I've, you know, input my specimen part number. Again, it's everything I'm touching and doing, it's going to track for me. So with that, I'm actually done. Um, I, I'm gonna finish this sample, local files. Uh, I'm just doing it to a local output folder. So let me make sure that I can actually see what I'm doing. All right, so we're gonna call this Tuesday, March, I believe it's the 7th. And what this is gonna output for me, and I'll show you where those are. I'm not gonna start a new sample, and then I'm not gonna save my changes. Um, but even though I'm not saving my changes within the method, in my sample file, I still have that log of everything that I changed while I was testing. So my method's not gonna save, but that's all right. All right, I'm gonna go to my output folder and I have my sample file that I've exported. I have a PDF report um, and then I have CSV results. I unfortunately do not have Excel on this PC. Um, so I don't want to open it up in the text, but you do have the option to export your results table as well as raw data if that's something that interests you. I'm going to open up this PDF. Um, it's going to look, there we go, that's not bad. This is a rough report, This, <laughs> but um, 
there's another video that we have done by one of my colleagues uh, that goes into how you can adjust your reporting format to suit your needs. You can add your company logo pictures. You can add as many um, results up in this table as you want, as well as down below. You can add multiple graphs. There's a lot you could do, but I mostly just wanted to point out that you can generate a PDF file, hopefully better than mine. So. All right, with that, I'm actually gonna stop sharing here. Very high level overview, but hopefully makes you feel a little bit better about the workflow and how it would look as an operator. And I'm gonna go back to my PowerPoint so we can talk about what the upgrade looks like. There we go. <clears throat> All right, come on. There we go. Okay. So what does it actually look like, like the process of upgrading? Um, your Blue Hill 3 files, so methods, samples, reports, are actually capable of being open in Blue Hill U. So if, if we want to convert a method file, um, when we open it into Blue Hill Universal, it will convert into a Blue Hill Universal file. Um, now, there is a possibility of errors related to some user calculations as well as complex test parameters. Nine out of 10 times though, it's going to convert one to one and you should be okay. But just in case that you do happen to have some of these issues, uh, a window is gonna pop up when you try to open the method and it's gonna indicate where those errors are and where to fix them. But that's not all on you though. Um, when you purchase the Blue Hill Universal package, uh, that does include as well on-site training. So five of your methods are going to be converted by your field service engineer. If you're looking for additional training or maybe you have uh, dozens upon dozens of methods, um, there is additional packages you can purchase. And again, this is going to be a conversation with your sales representative, but this is also if you do have a lot of, of methods and you wanna get ahead of upgrading, uh, you can actually have those converted ahead of time. So with that, um, I hope that I've been able to put your mind at ease and excite you for this software. But if you have any more, like if you want to see even deeper into the software, we're going to put a Calendly link into the chat and you can book time with either myself or one of my colleagues um, and we can cover anything else you want to see. Uh, I just ask, you know, when you request the time, please add a little brief description so I can prepare ahead of time. Um, and this is also a really great way to get the upgrade process started. So hopefully my colleague Rob has been doing a great job of answering questions in the chat, but I'm going to stop sharing and look to see if there is anything else in there. Let's see. No questions. That's cool. Um, so it doesn't look like there's any questions. Totally cool. Um, but there are, you know, some frequently asked questions that we get that I, in case I haven't touched on them. Um, do you have to create all of your methods from scratch? No. Um, so if you have existing methods, then there is that conversion. But also, um, I'm going to actually go back in here. So when you purchase Blue Hill Universal, you're going to get the option of an application. So, and you're going to get a suite of methods related to um, common standards for that application. So for instance, we have adhesives, biomedical, composites, elastomers, metals, plastics, tensiles, and torsion. If we look at plastics, we can see all of the common methods, um, you know, ASTM, D695, ASTM D638, uh, you get one of these or you could get all of them. So one or all of them. Let's stop that. Um, in addition to that, options for exporting, just to kind of recover that, you have options for CSV files. You can also do customizable file formats um, that fit your lab specific needs. Um, or you can even connect to an Instron SQL or SQL database. Um, and that would be with an additional module called Trend Tracker, if that's something that interests you. 
as well as that PDF that I'm sure you can make look way better than I can. So with that though, if there's no other questions, um, that's awesome, but I hope that you take advantage of the Calendly link. I'd love to talk to, uh, talk to you further, especially about your testing needs. Um, but yeah, with that, I'm, I'm all done. Oh, so. I'm going to throw it back to you actually, Ashley, there's, <laughs> there are some questions in here that, that oh. I'm seeing. Um, and I think there's a few that we can probably, um, maybe throw your way. Um, there's the Q and a little panel, um, if you popped out. So there's, um, can you run all this, uh, or can you run Blue Hill Universal on a non-touch standalone PC as well? Yes, you can. Yeah. Um, this totally optional. If you want to provide your own PC, um, whether that's Windows 10 or Windows 11, totally fine. Okay. Um, I think you may have just answered this one a second ago, but is it possible that Blue Hill Universal can be installed with standard ISO and ASTM methods for tensile testing, and are there additional costs for this installment? Um, that's going to depend on the application type that you test with. Um, as I kind of showed, hopefully, maybe it's a plastics one, but when you select like one of those workspaces or one of those um, suites, that should come with like the majority of, of ASTM and ISO standards. So. Um, and there is a question here. I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer this one. Is it possible to add one grouping of tested samples into another grouping of tested samples for combined <laughs> results grouping? Oh, I don't know the answer to that question. I'm okay. sorry. Well, we'll, but we'll I look could into find it. Out. I, I'll find out and I'll, I, can, I can respond to that. I'm sorry. Um, does it support classic horizontal layout on a desktop with a mouse? Yes, it does. Um, yeah, you don't have to have it within this, this view. You can definitely have it on landscape. Um, do you see more, Nick? <laughs> so. it, there's, there's a couple more, but I think they're more specific to individual, uh, mm -hmm. cases. So I think those will be ones that we, uh, address afterwards by email. So, um, I, thanks, thanks everybody for sending in questions. I know, uh, Rob has been. Uh, busy. It looks like there's a bunch of questions. So even if you want to go back and review some of the questions that other people have asked and, and Rob has addressed uh, through text, you can see those by the Q&A uh, section. Um, but at this point, I think uh, we're going to wrap things up. But before we go, I just want to have a few quick notes. Uh, again, a reminder that, um, you know, we, we are recording this session. So uh, all of you will receive an email with a, a copy of the recording in case you want to uh, go back and review anything. We're also doing another session at uh, one o'clock. Um, so if you if you miss part of it or whatever, um, feel free to, to sign back up for that one on our website. And then like Ashley mentioned, uh, she will be hosting a similar webinar for anyone with uh, systems running Blue Hill 1 or Blue Hill 2. So that's mm -hmm. going to be in late April. Um, the event hasn't been created yet, but um, kind of watch out for that maybe in uh, sometime early April. Uh, we're going to have that posted to our website and probably do uh, uh, an email invites. Um, and then for anyone working with composites, we are hosting a webinar around reducing variability in composites testing on March 29th. Uh, that's uh, in conjunction with uh, Composites World Magazine. So that's our composites market manager, Ian McIntaggart. Um, so definitely... Uh, if you're interested in any of those sessions, uh, I encourage you to check out our webinar page. I'm going to actually drop a link to that into the group chat there in case you want to check that out. We also have a ton of on-demand webinars from, I mean, they go back years, but um, we've done a lot of webinars over the years. So there's a lot of great uh, previous content on there if you want to check that out. So with that said, I just want to say thanks again to Ashley for presenting today. Uh, great job. And thanks to all of you for attending. Thanks for all of your great, great questions. Uh, feel free to keep sending those in while we're here. Uh, we really appreciate you joining us and hope to see you again next time. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you all. <laughs>